Black man, when you're moving in these streets, you need to understand you on your own. You can't think that these women are going to look out for you, so you got to look out for yourself. Now available in paperback and e-readers, E.C. Horror of a Hyena Woman. Elle's aspiring angel takes on a wicked werewoman in this action-packed all-new E.C. series adventure. Get E.C. Horror of a Hyena Woman in paperback and e-readers today. A mother instructed her son to shoot and kill a man at a Chicago hot dog stand. All news footage used in this video is under fair use of United States copyright law of 1976 and is used in conjunction with my commentary. And a disturbing case unfolds in court. A mother accused of ordering her son to commit murder in a West Pullman restaurant. The mother and son are now charged, both of them. Elizabeth Matthews joins us now with more on this developing story. Elizabeth? Yeah, not only that mom who's accused of giving those shoot to kill orders is now being held on $3 million bail. Parts of that shooting were actually captured on this restaurant's surveillance video, which helped the witnesses identify the suspects to police. So this all happened Sunday night, police tell us, just after 11 o'clock, about 11.05 p.m. 35-year-old Carlisha Hood and her 14-year-old son arrived at the Maxwell Street restaurant on South Halstead at 117. Hood went in for food. Her son waited in the car. Prosecutors say that's when she began arguing with this man, 32-year-old Jeremy Brown, who was also inside ordering food at the time. Hood, be Hood began texting her son, who appeared in the doorway, hands in his pockets. A fight became physical between Hood and the victim. The victim was able to punch the woman once. That's when prosecutors say the boy pulled out a gun, fired a single shot to the victim's back, followed him outside, kept firing, striking him fatally twice in the back. Once outside of the restaurant, while the co-defendant was still shooting at the victim, the defendant instructed her son, the co-defendant, to continue to shoot and kill the victim. Once the co-defendant finished shooting the victim, the defendant turned her focus towards witness one. She began pointing at witness one and instructing her son to shoot her. Prosecutors say the hood even tried to get the gun from her son, but he pushed her away. No shots were fired at that witness, who is also the victim's girlfriend. Both mother and son facing murder charges. She's also charged with contributing to the delinquency of a minor. The teen boy also facing unlawful use and possession of a firearm. Both were told did surrender themselves to police yesterday. We're also told that Hood, the woman charged in this, the mom charged in this, also had a FOID card herself and was licensed to conceal carry. Reporting live, Elizabeth Matthews, Fox 32, Chicago. Now, in this incident, which took place on the far south side of Chicago at the Maxwell Street Express restaurant, 35-year-old Carlisha Hood drove there to get some food with her 14-year-old son. And as her 14-year-old son was waiting inside of the Lincoln Nautilus that Carlisha Hood was driving, she went inside to place her order. And as she was placing her order, she ran into 32-year-old Jeremy Brown and his girlfriend. And as she was in the restaurant and running into Jeremy Brown, they had a confrontation which turned into an argument. And as this argument was escalating, Carlisha Hood allegedly was texting to her son to take out the gun that she had in his hoodie and come into the restaurant and allegedly look to go out here and defend her from the threat of Jeremy Brown. Now, as this incident was escalating inside of the restaurant, Jeremy Brown was getting more and more emotional and as he was getting more and more emotional, he went from being extremely angry to exploding in a rage where he wound up allegedly punching Carlisha Hood in the head three times as featured in a viral video that is on social media. And as Jeremy Brown was attacking Carlisha Hood, his girlfriend was allegedly laughing about the whole situation until things got real when the 14-year-old son of Carlisha Hood then began shooting at Jeremy Brown, striking him once in the back, leading to him fleeing from the restaurant. And as he was fleeing from the restaurant, the 14-year-old son of Carlisha Hood allegedly then shot him until he was dead. 
then returned to the restaurant where Carlicia Hood instructed him to shoot the girlfriend of Jeremy Brown, but the boy refused to do this, and the mother, caught up in her emotions, wanted to her to want him to shoot the the girlfriend because she was laughing about the whole situation but the boy refused to let her use the firearm to shoot anyone else now this entire incident is extremely disturbing however it really shows how both of these individuals weren't thinking critically and because they weren't thinking critically they escalated an entire situation of just going to go put in an order for some fast food into a situation where someone was shot and killed and when I take a critical examination of the behavior of Jeremy Brown it definitely fits the pattern and profile for beta males that I talk about in my book, The Man Crisis. And when I look at the behavior of Carlicia Hood, it fits the pattern and profile for the feminist indoctrinated woman that I talk about in my book, The Woman Crisis. And when I look at the entire scenario, it fits everything I talk about in the chapter of The Woman Crisis called Murder and the Woman Crisis. Now, when I look at the behavior of Carlicia Hood, this looks like one of these feminist indoctrinated women who really does not have any regard for her for the safety of her son because her behavior basically turned a minor situation into a major um, crime because I believe that there was a crime committed here as related to first degree murder because as Carlicia Hood was in this restaurant, she could have easily just left the restaurant to de-escalate the situation. However, as she was texting her son, instructing him to shoot Jeremy Brown, this basically constitutes first degree murder because this basically shows malice of forethought and intent to kill. And it shows malice of forethought because as she was in this argument with Jeremy Brown, what she was looking to do was because she could not win the argument with Jeremy Brown, what she wanted to do was use her son to go out here and take the life of Jeremy Brown, all for simply disagreeing with her. Now, this whole situation basically escalated because Carlicia Hood was in the argument with Jeremy Brown, who is a textbook beta male, like I talk about in my book, The Man Crisis, and Jeremy Brown, because he was a beta male who was primarily raised by females, was not really thinking critically about this trivial situation, which is going to a fast food restaurant to get some food. No, he was so caught up in his feelings about trying to win an argument with a complete stranger, he was not thinking about more important intangibles of his manhood, like his dignity, like his self-respect, his safety, or his freedom. No, this beta male was so caught up in his feelings about trying to win an argument with a woman in, in order to try to save face in front of his girlfriend that he could not even think about how much dignity he was losing by getting into a argument with a woman who he probably didn't know from Adam Housecat. And because he was so busy trying to win this argument with this woman, he couldn't even see that he basically was all by himself because like the brother of logic and common sense said many years ago in a classic video, if a woman truly cares about you, she's going to make every effort to protect you. And it's clear here that Jeremy Brown's girlfriend didn't really care about him at all. No, instead of going out here and pulling her man to the side and saying, nah, it's just not worth it. Let's just get out of here and go someplace else for food. We're not going to get into it with this lady. We're going to just leave everything alone. No, this woman, instead of looking to protect the man that she supposedly loved, was sitting here laughing about the entire situation. And as she was sitting there laughing about the entire situation, she was showing how little regard she had for Jeremy Brown's life. And again, basically having the same mindset of being feminist indoctrinated as Carlisha Hood, believing that this black man's life 
had no value at all. Because again, if this girlfriend truly cared about this man, she would have made an effort to, again, pull that guy out of that situation, let him know, look, it ain't worth fighting over um, whatever you're arguing about with this woman, and we will just go someplace else and go get some food from someplace else. But no, she let this beta male go on because it was all about her ego, and because it was all about her ego, she let this man continue to argue with this woman, not understanding that an argument between a man and a woman, again, makes them both look bad, because this man is a reflection of you, and as a reflection of you, it's embarrassing to see your man out here going out here fighting with a complete stranger. That really just, again, shows that you're, that he is a weak man and a weak man who cannot go out here and stand up like a man. And again, Jeremy Brown really didn't understand what manhood is because any man who understands what manhood is understands that He's not going to sit there and argue with a complete stranger. No, he's going to have the critical thinking skills and the ability to use logic and reason to say, look, I'm good. I see this situation is getting hot. And yeah, while I want to get this food from this restaurant, if I haven't paid for anything, what I'm going to do is just walk out of this restaurant with my dignity, with my self-respect and my freedom and leave this woman to simmer and boil in whatever anger she has because this food ain't really worth me um, losing my dignity by arguing with this woman, losing my self-respect by bringing myself down to this woman's level, uh, or losing my freedom by going out here and getting so angry that I want to put hands on this woman. That's what a man is going to do because he knows how to navigate through his emotions, and while he feels upset about this woman being disrespectful, he's going to take his respect by walking away. Unfortunately, Jeremy Brown never got these lessons in manhood because he doesn't have a father in his life, and because he didn't have his father in his life, he went out here and escalated a situation, not ever thinking about the big picture as related to his face one, or thinking about this woman who never had his back too. He never thought about any of those things, and as a result, he started to escalate his anger and got into this and let this woman work him into a rage, again, losing control over himself. And he lost control over himself because he really didn't understand women. And he didn't understand that when you're dealing with women, well, a lot of women who start arguments like to get you to go around in a circle because women do not argue with logic. They argue with emotion. And because they argue with emotion, they will say the same things over and over again. And as you try to convince them what they're saying is wrong, all you're going to do is work up your emotions and all you're going to do is work yourself into an anger being further provoked by her because she's never going because she's going to be indignant and continue to double down on her stance and that's going to make you more and more angry until you wind up exploding in a rage if you don't catch yourself now critically thinking men they understand that these women, what they want to do is work you into an anger so that they can get a reaction out of you. And that's what that's what Carlisha Hood was looking to do with Jeremy Brown, work him into an anger till she got that reaction because her goal was to get this guy to work himself to the point where he would look to put hands on her. And then what he, he would happen is she would go out here and use that as an excuse for her son to go out here and do harm to him. And that's where the 14-year-old boy basically shows how much of a beta male he actually is because this beta male, who was basically a mama's boy, was again looking to allegedly protect his mother, not understanding how his mama was out here looking to manipulate him and use him as a pawn on the chessboard in order to go out here and use him to go out here and defend her and as related to trying to um, protect him, protect his mother from her own ratchetness. Because the mother basically was out here looking to win this argument because women are emotional and women want to be right. And because this mother wanted to win this argument and saw herself losing to this beta male who was just caught up in his feelings and was not looking to back away from his position, 
she was looking to break that man down by using her son as a weapon. And this is why I believe that this is a case of first degree murder, because again, the intent was shown with the malice of forethought as related to texting the son. The actions of this woman were not to leave the restaurant and de-escalate the situation. No, she was so caught up in her pride because she had this concealed carry permit and had a licensed gun and she looked to use the licensed gun as a weapon against this man. And again, this is no different as I see it than many of the other murders I have heard about, like the one against the young black boy with R Ralph Yarl who wound up being shot through the door, or the young man who was shot at the um, gas station um, store. I mean, this is the same type of malice of forethought uh, that I'm seeing here as related to the murder of this black man, Jeremy Brown. Again, this woman could have easily de-escalated the situation by leaving the restaurant by saying, okay, yeah, I put in an order for this food. And what I'm going to do is I see this dude is acting crazy and I'm just going to leave the restaurant. Moreover, as she was texting her son, she could have easily texted to her son to call the police and she could have went and, call and told her son, look, there's a crazy guy in here. I need you to call the police because this man is looking to go out here and continue to argue with me. So she could have call, had her son call the police. Again, these were things that she could have done to de-escalate the situation. But instead, she looked to escalate the situation. And then after her son looked to take the life of this man and did take the life of this man, she then was instructing the son to take the life of the girlfriend all for laughing at her because her ego was bruised. And again, this is why I believe this woman participated in first degree murder with malice of forethought and, and did this again deliberately as related to this whole situation and added to the delinquency of her son, husband, who was in a codependent relationship because this 14 year old boy basically was one of these son husbands, one of these codependent boys who wanted to go out here and protect his mama, not understanding his mama was out here participating in some ratchet behavior by going out here and put and going out here and making a threat as related to this man. Now, this man did throw the first punch, but this woman was planning his murder even before she he even laid a hand on her. So when I look at this whole situation, I look at it from a panoramic view. I can see where all of the individuals were out here, again, participating in, again, be, be, de, de, depraved behavior. And again, when I look at this whole situation, it just really is one that troubles me. Because again, you have two women and they weren't looking out for the boy or the man that they were supposed to protect. Because you'll have feminists go out here and say that women have to protect, I mean, men have to protect women. But women should also be looking to protect the men and boys in their life. Now, you would think that a mother would look to protect her son from the threat of this individual by leaving that venue, and that would be her way of protecting her son. Moreover, you would think that the girlfriend would go out here and look to protect her man by saying, no, we ain't going to get into it with him. But no, when I look at this whole situation, I see the same callousness from these women that I saw with Jada Pinkett at the 2022 Oscars as she went out here and sent Will Smith on that kamikaze mission to slap Chris Rock. And again, I see the same type of callousness here as related to Carlicia Hood and Jeremy Brown's girlfriend that I see with Jada Pinkett. Again, showing me how feminist indoctrinated women have no respect or regard for their man, no respect or regard for the health or safety of the men in their lives, and are willing to go out here and let these men put their health, safety, and freedom in jeopardy, all in order to sate their ego. That's what I see happening here as related to this entire situation that took place at this Maxwell Street Express restaurant. I see how these feminist indoctrinated women had absolutely no respect for the boy or the man in their lives, and 
basically sent these men to go out here on a kamikaze mission, similar to the one Jada Pinkett Smith sent Will Smith on when he went to slap Chris Rock. I mean, sent this man out here, never showing any sort of regard for them because these women don't see these men as men that they respect and again see these men as less than them and beneath them and that's the only reason why they would go out here and 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 just let these men go out here and again do this kind of harm to themselves because these women did not really care about these men or this boy at all and again this whole situation shows how little, again, respect these women have for black men. Because, again, if this woman, like the brother of logic and common sense, said in his classic video, if these women cared about the boy or the man in their lives, they would have gone out here and tried to protect them. I mean, if this girlfriend sitting up here, your man is in an argument with a complete stranger and you're laughing about it. And laughing about it shows how little respect you have for that man. And sadly, this beta male, it never dawned on him and registered in his mind that he was basically a joke to this woman. And with this boy, he never once thought, hey, this, this woman, this, mo this my mother, basically doesn't think about my own life. The only th part that I really thought where you really thought about it for a moment was when she instructed him to kill the girlfriend. That's possibly the one moment that he possibly thought, hey, my mama ain't really thinking about me. But the whole thing is, is that he, in that one moment, was too late because now that you've gone and murdered this man, this 14-year-old boy is now on his road to the penitentiary where he will be dealing with Bubba, Tiny, Roscoe, Big Dave, Melvin, and Mr. Sprinkles. And he's going to go from being a boy who was just going to high school to a boy going to juvenile hall where he's going to have to be dealing with trying to fight off guys, trying to turn him into a t his tight end into a wide receiver, looking to trade him for Little Debbie snack cakes, Raymond noodles, packets of Crystal Light, packets of Taster's Choice coffee, peppermint balls, packet packages of Twinkies, snack pack puddings, off-brand lemon cookies, off-brand Oreo cookies, Fritos chips. I mean, this boy basically destroyed his life trying to protect a mama who didn't do the job of trying to protect him by going out here and saying, look, I'm going to walk away from this dude and I'm going to walk away from this dude because I need to raise my boy to become a man. But instead of looking to raise her boy to become a man, she put her boy on the road to becoming a man in crisis and a man in crisis who's going to possibly have to deal with going to juvenile hall until he's about 25 or 30 and having a record as related to murder and his mama basically going to prison for the rest, possibly for the rest of her life, all because she would thought she could go out here and get into it with a man who was basically a beta male. And again, neither one of them using any sort of critical thinking because anybody who's a critical thinker looks at the big picture. And when you look at the big picture of a situation, you realize, hey, if I'm going someplace to get some food and some people are acting a fool, I need to get out of that place. And that was a lesson I learned way back when I was 14 in about 1988, when I ran into a similar situation with a dude when I was ordering some pizza and this guy was just trying to shake me down for some quarters for the video games, not understanding that he was losing his dignity by begging for those quarters. And ever since then, I understood you don't just keep going back and forth with those individuals. No, if somebody is looking to act a fool in a place, you get out of that place, even if you've paid the money, because your health, your safety, and your freedom are worth more than whatever money you put down for that fast food. And it's better for you to walk away than deal with this kind of individual, because this could be the difference between life and death. And sadly, you have beta males who take their lives for granted, thinking that these women think, really care about them, when in actuality, they don't care about you. And I talk about this in the chapter Murder and the Woman Crisis, because many of these women, they're looking to get power over a man. And if they can't get power over a man with the weapon of their mouth, they will look to weaponize other individuals like simps or their 
uh, son husbands and they will look to use those individuals to do harm to you so you have to go out here and look out for yourself black man because you are the only person who is looking out for your own health and safety it's clear that these feminist indoctrinated women do not care about you, do not care if you live or die. And that was shown by the way this woman was laughing at the um, her boyfriend basically getting in an argument with another woman instead of looking to go out here and protect her man by telling him, no, we ain't, we ain't arguing with her over nothing silly like this. What we're going to do is go on to another spot and go get some, some other type of food. This ain't worth our dignity and our respect because she will understand the way he behaves reflects on me but again when i look at this whole situation it's really sad because the biggest losers in this situation were the man who lost his life and even worse the 14 year old boy whose life is going to be forever destroyed because his mother wasn't looking out for his safety now some will say oh this is a gun control issue because this woman had a concealed carry but this is not about a gun issue this is about a self-control issue because somebody who has self-control will not impulsively instruct their son to go take the life of somebody else and somebody who has self-control is not going to escalate a situation into a incident where somebody loses their life no that's not what a woman of character will do a woman of character will understand that her behavior reflects on her son and the example she sets for her son is one that she wants to show him how to conflict resolve in a constructive way and the way she goes out here and resolves it is by walking away seeing that this male is basically an effeminate male because we could see that by the braided hairstyle he has and the slim pants he has again this is an effeminate male and a masculine and, a, and, a, and this woman was trying to be more masculine and again trying to get power over this man but a woman of character is going to say look i'm going to take my respect by walking away from this man and this whole situation when i look at it again it's really sad and what's even sadder are the responses i get from those who are caught up in the gender war who want to make it about black women and how about how bad black women are yes these women were ratchet but the whole problem is these women have been indoctrinated into feminism and under feminism they believe that they are the equal to a man and their egos are so big they want to win arguments and that's what led to this whole escalation of the situation this woman didn't want to swallow her pride and because she didn't want to swallow her pride she put her pride and joy on the road to going to prison and again destroyed his life because of her ego and her feelings and this is why every man out here has to really understand you are on your own out here you have to think about be about looking out for yourself because the women in your life aren't going to look out for you and try to protect you you are basically on your own when you're dealing with these feminist indoctrinated women and you have to see them as feminist indoctrinated women until their actions show you that they are a help meet and this guy jeremy brown sadly didn't ever get to understand this because he didn't have a father or a man like myself to teach him no because there was no man to teach him hey this woman needs to show you that she's looking to protect you. This woman needs to show you she's looking out for you. You need to watch yourself out here because basically you might have a woman on your arm. She may even be dropping a skid mark thong and giving you a taste of the atomic waste. But she's not showing you she's a bona fide woman because she's not looking to go out here and look out for you and look out for you in every situation. Again, real true to gay women would not let their man even get into it with this kind of woman no they would have let pulled that man to the side pulled him out of that restaurant charged that meal to the game and said look we, we we're better than this we're not gonna get into it with this dude and yeah i'm, I'm repeating this multiple times because some people just don't get it but this whole situation shows me the dangers of a man and a woman in crisis coming together and when a beta male and a feminist indoctrinated woman come together you get this kind of chaos because you have an effeminate man a masculine woman and both of them want to be right and again when they want to be right things go wrong and sadly people sadly wind up 
losing their lives or having their lives completely changed forever. Now, if you want to learn why many beta males become dysfunctional and participate in behavior like this, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Man Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, Google Play, and Barnes and & Noble. And if you want to learn why women go out here and escalate situations to um, become as violent as this, or what leads to the mindset of them becoming violent like this, you can pick up my book, The Woman Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You could also find The Woman Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, 1987. Learn lessons about life and teenage love in the 1980s in this coming-of-age John Haynes story. Get your copy of John Haynes, 1987 in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Now available for the first time in paperback, why 70% of black women are single. Learn all the reasons why so many black women can't find a husband and why 70% of black women are single. Get your copy of Why 70% of Black Women Are Single on Amazon.com today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.